Hey y'all, Angela Walters here, host of the Midnight Quilt Show, mother and entrepreneur. I love all things quilting. The holidays are right around the corner, but I've teamed up with Blueprint to create three exciting DIY quilty projects that are ultra giftable. But before we get started with the first project, are you one of my Midnight Quilt Show faithfuls? If so, there may be people watching that haven't heard of it. So tell them what they're missing in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to Blueprint's channel so you don't miss any of these giftable videos. Okay, so let's get crafty. In this video, we're gonna learn how to make the cathedral window pillow. It's the ultimate gift for somebody that you love that's quilt worthy, but it's so much easier than it looks because there's no curved piecing. And the pattern is free, absolutely free. There's no reason not to make this adorable pillow. So let me tell you what you need to get started. All you need to make this pillow is some background fabric and some bright, fun fabrics. First, cut the background into four inch squares. Fold some of the squares in half diagonally and iron them to make it nice and crisp. There's just something about ironing. It's the perfect time to reflect on life goals and practice mindfulness. Or, or catch up on trashy TV. I mean, if you're into that kind of thing, which I'm not, no. Place two folded triangles together on the right side of the four inch square of fabric so that the folds are butted up next to each other. Butted. I'm such a two year old. Pin the folded pieces in place and sew around all four sides with an eighth inch seam allowance. This is just to hold them in place until we assemble the whole pillow top. Repeat to make a bunch of squares that are gonna make a pretty pillow top or you have some fun fabric origami that you could hand out too. Arrange six of the squares into a line and that's gonna make the first row of our pillow. Now, you have to pay special attention to the folds. We want them to make a zigzag shape, so make sure you rotate every other block. Sew them together in groups of two, this time using a quarter inch seam allowance. The quarter inch seam allowance is gonna hide the eighth inch basting seam that we've just done. Then sew the groups together to make a row. And just like that, you have the first row of your pillow. Wasn't that fun? Now you're gonna repeat it to make a total of six. And just like that, it's finished, voila. I'm just kidding. That would be a perfectly boring pillow. We need to add some color, some pizzazz. You know what we need? No, no, we don't need wine. It's too early for wine. Plus, I'm trying to behave with my sparkling water. We need fabric. And this fabric is bright and cheery. I love the rainbow of colors, the different prints, and what's great about pillows is you can get away with using fabrics that you wouldn't want to necessarily use on your bed. So gather your favorite pre-cut squares because we're gonna trim most of them to four and a half inches and a few of them to four and three quarters. Don't worry, there's a free pattern that you can download that gives you all this information. I mean, you downloaded it already, right? No? Well, go ahead and download it, I'll wait. Oh, good, you're back, okay. So now that you've cut your pre-cut squares, you can arrange them on your pillow by placing them in between the folds of your pillow top. This is where your inner artist can come out to play. You can do color arrangements and color wash and use your low volume prints, or you can just throw any old piece anywhere you want to. So go ahead and pin it once you get it in place. Now we're gonna hold those squares in place by folding back the white fabric so that it looks like a curve and sewing it in place using that eighth inch seam allowance. So I'm working my way along that curve, not worrying if it's perfectly curved, it's gonna look fine. But as I approach the point, I'm gonna pause so that I have just enough space to fold my next curve over. And that's gonna help me catch both of those sides as I work my way around. Then from there, I can leave the needle down and rotate the whole thing so I can do the next side without stopping and starting over. Folding it back over my beautiful curve and I'm gonna do the same on that side. This is the cool part. It's like applique without the applique. It's like curved piecing without the curved piecing. It's just amazing. Keep going until all your curves are sewn down and looky there, just gorgeousness. Now it's time to turn this into a pillow. 
So we're gonna put two pieces of the background fabric on top of it, right sides together, so that they overlap. Go ahead and clip them into place. And I'm gonna sew one last seam around all four edges, but this time we're using a half inch seam allowance. But I'm gonna quickly trim the corners to get rid of any of that bulk for when I flip it inside out. And when you're done, you'll have a beautiful pillow and you'll have mastered three different seam allowances. That's quite the accomplishment. Put your pillow form in and look at that. A cathedral window pillow that's perfect for decorating your house or giving as a gift to that special person that you love. But first, an announcement. So here's the deal. I know that not everybody can be a quilter. I mean, not everybody is special that way, but it's okay because quilters love giving gifts. We love showing someone how much we love them by spending time and money to make a special handcrafted gift. For some quilters, it's almost a compulsion. I know quilters that have already made baby quilts for people that aren't even pregnant yet. If you're a non-quilter and you're fortunate enough to receive one of these special gifts, here are some things you should know. Tips for non-quilters, what quilters really want you to know. If you're fortunate enough to receive a gift from a quilter, just know it's a big deal. I mean, not like a big deal as an extra kidney, but it's still a big deal. We want you to know that it took a lot of time and money to make this special gift. I mean, we don't wanna say the exact dollar amount out loud. Just, just know that that gift wasn't cheap. It ain't cheap. Yes, it would have been cheaper just to buy you a blanket from Pottery Barn, but that's not the point. The point is we love to buy fabric, cut it up into little pieces, and then sew it together into a big piece. You don't have to understand, we do it out of love. Well, love and the fabric fascination that borders on obsessing, but I digress. So when you're given such a meaningful gift, here are some guides on things that you should and shouldn't say. Don't say, oh, that's cute, while not even opening up the quilt. That's like telling Beyonce that you think her songs are cute. By all means, compliment it and gush away. I mean, if it's not too much work for you. But at least have some idea where the work went into it. Don't say, I think I like the unpieced back better than the quilt top. Great, trust me. You're gonna wanna pay attention to these tips because here's a heads up. If you receive a gift from a quilter, it may be a test gift. That's right. We wanna make sure you can keep a quilt alive before we commit to making one. So we give you a test gift, kind of like when you buy a dog when you wanna see if you're ready to have children. Don't assume that just because somebody loves you that they'll make you a quilt because we can love you while still deeming you not quilt worthy. The best bet is to take care of the special gifts that we give you and maybe you'll get a quilt on down the road. Which is why this pillow is such a perfect project for the quilters out there. It's a perfect test gift to make sure that somebody's ready for a quilt. I sure hope my mom loves it. So what do you think? Are you gonna give this pillow a shot? If so, let me know how it went in the comments below. And this is the first of a three-part series. Next week, we're gonna learn how to make a zipper pouch. Well, happy quilting.